Vegas. We got stuck in the desert, and we had a little hangover remix out there, man. Um, I wore a wig to school once, and they said no headgear was allowed. <laughs> Um, How did, the, did spider they, web Was it tights. obvious that it was a wig? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was, I was, was having fun. It wig. <laughs> See, this is exactly why we have them on the show, and this is what makes them fun. You're listening to KXVS, the voice of Stockton, 92.1 FM. Do you want to relive the golden days of Stockton? Join Nate Knott on Stockton Alive every first and third Monday at 6 p.m. Tune into the voice of Stockton.org. KXVS LP Stockton. The views and opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect those of KXVS The Voice of Stockton or its parents, affiliates, management, and staff. Good morning, Stocktonians, and welcome to another episode of Tales and Tips. I'm so honored to have with me today representatives from Open Door Services, Inc., and we shortly will talk about all of the amazing services that they are offering in our community. I just wanted to remind you first about a couple events that are coming up. Stockton is having a 4th of July parade in downtown Stockton, and that's going to be happening on Wednesday, July 4th. The parade starts at 10 a.m., and there are still openings for floats and organizations to participate. If you're interested in doing that, please contact Linda Vasquez, and you can reach her at 361-9422. She is the event chair, and that is brought to you by the United Veterans Council of San Joaquin County. I also wanted to remind you of the Pixie Woods Wine Tasting that is happening Friday, June 22nd at Pixie Woods and is helping to fundraise for all of the amazing activities at Pixie Woods. So come out and join us on Friday, June 22nd, and the event starts at 4. We hope to see you there. All right, with no further ado, let's introduce our two representatives from Open Door Services, Inc. We have with us today Stacy Lyons, who's the CEO, and John Nakawasi, who's the director. All right, so Stacy, let's take it away. Let's tell people what Open Door Services, Inc. is. Got it. Thank you so much for inviting us. So first of all, Open Door Services is a service that provides... Um, additional services for developmentally disabled adults who are over the age of 18 um, and typically they come out of the school districts age out about 22 sometimes we will get younger individuals who've you know gotten diplomas um, and we provide multiple services for them we provide employment training we provide behavioral services for those individuals that have difficult you know concerns with how they function in society and um, we also just get those people who are tired of being home and don't want to you know, stay at home all the time out and integrated into the community to learn to be independent. That's awesome. You're enhancing the quality of their life mm -hmm. and you're not just in Stockton. You have three locations and one location without walls. Yes, we, um, we originated out of the Modesto area. Uh, we then moved up to the Stockton area and we grew really rapidly back in 2002. Um, and then our most recent program has been Manteca and Tracy. And Tracy is our walls free, but we are looking in the future to expand and get a facility out there for them as well. Awesome, awesome. And you also mentioned we were talking about Lodi, that a lot of the people that use your services come from Lodi and they're able to do that and use the Stockton facility. Yes, um, we will, our, our consumers are so independent because we've trained them to uh, use public transportation that they are able to get themselves to our program, meet in the community. Um, we even will pick up some who are not ready to be independent. Uh, so yes, we do serve Lodi as well. Awesome, awesome. And John, you're the director. Now, how do you direct when there's so many different locations? How, how does that happen? So I am actually only the director for Stockton location. Okay. Um, we have uh, another director in Manteca, Tracy, Kenneth White, and then we have Erica Irving who directs our Modesto program. Awesome, awesome. And do, the, do all of the facilities offer the same thing? Are you guys basically having the same events and things like that at each location? We, we try to mirror um, each other's site as best as we can, obviously with different populations and different consumers, it can differ a little bit. 
Um, but as far as like the employment opportunities and the uh, employment trainings and, and the objectives and things that we run, it's, everything's pretty much universal between all three sites. Wonderful. And how many people are you serving with four different sites? Ooh, the Stockton, I would say, is about 300 um, wow. between our behavior management portion and CI community integration por uh, and program. In Modesto, I would say we're probably about 150, and then Manteca's closing in on them, and they're probably at about uh, 130. Yeah. And then the Tracy, the Tracy's no probably site. about 40 to 50. It's our smaller program. Wonderful. Yes. That's phenomenal. That's a lot of people being served. And earlier we were talking about that, unfortunately, two organizations in the Stockton community were closed down or shut down, and you're taking in some of those clients. Yes, um, I believe it was the Activity Center and um, Valley, Valley Caps, Valley Caps yeah. that recently closed down due to budget you know, concerns with uh, minimum wage increasing. It's just really hard. Unfortunately, you know, th this area of expertise is not really paid well um, mm -hmm. for a lot of the individuals that, have, that serve it, but it makes it even that much better because our employees love their job. Mm -hmm. It's rewarding for them. Um, so they're there not for the money, they're there for our clients. Well, in the skill set, it's unfortunate that they're not paid well because the skill set required to do what they're doing takes a lot of training, a lot of time to be able to do that, and it's very demanding. Definitely. Yeah, we, we go through several trainings um, to help them, you know, learn what how to deal with the behaviors for those that have them. Um, we learn how to deal with assaultive behaviors. Um, and then again, we learn, we train them on employment, how to be, go be a good job coach uh, for those consumers that are working in the community. Wonderful. Yeah. And how do you, we already talked, when you and I spoke, we talked about Walden. So Walden is more like this type of program to help and give skills for students that are in the school system. But how do you differ from like ARC or United Cerebral Palsy? Well, I would say that we are different in that we specialize um, and we cater to the individual. So if a client comes to us and says, you know, I wanna get a driver's license, but I need help practicing for that test. We just recently actually helped somebody who, to accomplish that. Wonderful. So she came in, we worked with her one-on-one, -on -one, and she passed her written test, which is the hardest part of it, mm -hmm. if you ask me. Um, so it's really based off in the individual and what their serv you know, services require and what they need. Um, other things that we do that differ would be that we have a farm where we have our clients go out and help actually they pre-plant the plants at our office. We have a, um, a greenhouse. greenhouse. And then once they get them ready to go, they will transplant them and then they can go sell them at the farmer's market. Wonderful. Um, and then we also have- Where are they planting them? Where is the farm? In Lodi, in mm -hmm. Lodi, Wonderful. in a ranch. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, definitely. And then we also have uh, mowed junk which is uh, where we trailer off you know, people's junk, either sell it, uh, not sell it, but bring it to our thrift store that's in Modesto because we run a thrift store as well. Um, wow. Yeah, or dump it. So we keep them busy and we, we, like I said, we try to cater to what their needs are and what they want to do. All right, and let's talk more about the thrift store and we'll go back and talk <laughs> about where your locations are and how people can reach you. Where is the thrift store in Modesto? Uh, the thrift store is located um, right next door to our Modesto Day program uh, at 730 McHenry Avenue. Um, and basically with the thrift store, it's ran by all of our consumers that are out in Modesto. Wonderful. Um, and we have a job coach that goes out there, and we also have another um, a manager that kind of oversees everything, uh, the day-to-day -day operations. Um, we recently just got into, what were we doing, the storages? So oh yeah, we'll go storage wars. So we'll go in and bid on storage mm -hmm. uh, units. We'll go out and bid on storage units, and then we'll get some of that furniture, have the consumers refurbish it, and then what we do is, is we'll go back and we'll sell it out at the thrift store. Wonderful. Um, awesome. And then all of our consumers that work there basically get paid a minimum wage for for what they do on all on all the stuff that we do out there. Wonderful. That sounds like a huge win win. Um, do you are you planning at all to have thrift stores near any of the other venues? We have thought about it. Um, our Stockton area is so busy with all of the other different things that they have and they're doing. Uh, we have two kiosks. We have one at our office where they actually do training, uh, training and they teach the consumers who are interested in doing food service. Um, Wonderful. And then we have our second kiosk located at VMRC where the consumers again run it with a job coach. And just to touch base on the kiosks is, is what we do at our offices. Um, in the Stockton office, well, in all three locations, I'm sorry, is, is we train our consumers 
um, in 12 week courses. So we have them take a 12 week course based on a curriculum that we have created for our consumers. Um, they, and I'll use that the kiosk as an example is, is we get a barista, our barista working from Starbucks that we have employed with us as an X one, um, teaches them how to make all the drinks, teaches them the day to day operations of the kiosk. Um, and basically that's their first step. Once they get through the 12 week training, they get a certificate at the end and basically they can go on to work at the, our kiosk that's at Valley Mountain Regional Center. Wonderful. Awesome. And I'm glad you mentioned Valley Mountain Regional because we were going to talk about how do clients come to you? How can clients reach you? So um, what they do is, is typically uh, our clients have service coordinators. Uh, they are the representatives for Valley Mountain Regional Center. And um, they have Valley Mountain Re Regional Center has tons of vendors that they work with. Um, of course, we're just one of them, but they will refer them to us. We will then take them uh, in and, and do a tour just to see if they are interested at all in what we have if to it's offer. it's a good fit. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then um, at that point, it moves forward from there. You know, they call us, they say they're interested, and then they become a client. So if a listener has someone in their family that would benefit from your service, how, how do they contact you? So what they would do is tell their service coordinator, or they can even call us, Open Door Services, we can find out who their contact is if they don't know. Because, you know, there are a lot of individuals out there that don't even realize that they have these services available to them. And, you know, they're running the streets, not really knowing what they can do with themselves. Um, so they can call Open Door Services, ask for Stacy or John. What's your number? Uh, my number is 209-475-1529. Um, or again, they can talk to their representative from Valley Mountain Regional Center, let them know they're interested in touring Open Door Services. Okay, and, and what's your web address and your Facebook page? So we are at uh, www.odsinc.org. And what was the other one? Your Facebook page? Facebook page. Okay, so we're at Open Door Services, and we only have one Open Door Services uh, page for all three sites. Um, so it's Open Door Services Incorporated. Wonderful. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And is there any limit, any time limit on how long a client can work with you? No. Um, it's, I, I know some consumers will, they learn at different rates. So I've had some consumers with this a long time. Um, and then I've had some consumers that have kind of already gotten independence and moved on, gotten jobs. And um, I have one gentleman who we started at the movie theater. He now only attends one day a week. Um, he works the for uh, Monday through Thursday, so he only attends with us on Friday. Um, and the only reason why he attends with us on Friday is because he likes just being part of part of us. So, That's awesome. Yeah. I also okay. encourage people to check out our Facebook. Um, I th it's just under Open Door Services. You'll see a lot of the different things that we have to offer through Facebook as well. Yes. Okay. And we it will show right. all the sites. Yeah, Wonderful. we usually will post all of our events on, on our Facebook. I was going to ask you, besides job training, do you offer any kind of life skills or integrating with society skills, things like that? We do. Um, as I said, we do have a lot of individuals who have come from the institutions and don't really you know, know how to live, quote unquote, a normal life and, and what the routines should be and just the typical things that we take for granted, they have to learn. So uh, we may have people who are you know, lower functioning who need the basics, how to groom themselves mm -hmm. appropriately, how to um, brush your teeth daily, how to introduce themselves. So we go step by step with the individual, assess right. them when they you know, arrive to us, and then we figure out where we need to go from there. Wonderful, and mm -hmm. you're just maximizing their quality of life, which is awesome, and what they're able to accomplish. Exactly. What about help with getting housing, things like that? So that that's usually reserved for the service coordinator. We definitely will um, assist the service coordinator and the consumer with getting them out to like tour different places or uh, to maybe just do the legwork of finding uh, a vacancy for them um, where they would be able to move into or uh, a good neighborhood they would be able to move into. Um, but we would forward that information over with the consumers. So it would be basically helping the consumer find those places and then um, the consumer taking that back to their service coordinator to assist them a little bit more in All that right. aspect. And let's go back and talk about where your facilities are located. So where is the one in Stockton? 4045 Coronado Avenue. Uh, it's right off of West Lane uh, in the back, back by the post office, right at the end of Enterprise. Um, and it looks really small in the front, but we're <laughs> at the dead end. And when you go in and see the whole facility, you'll be amazed. It's, it's a big facility with lots to offer. All right. And can people come and take a tour? Definitely. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And you're there during the week only? We... 
yeah, I'm sorry. Monday, no. uh, we're there Monday through Friday, um, and we arrive early as 7.30, um, and we're there till 5 p.m. Wonderful. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and what about for the clients? You mentioned that a lot of clients are able to ride the bus and things like that, um, and you said you do some transport for clients that don't. Are, are families dropping clients off as well? Um, we have a few, uh, not too many, but a lot of our guys are independent, so they take the city buses to, to our day program. Wonderful. Um, we also do transportation as a courtesy for some of those consumers. Um, and then a lot of the others will come in on uh, MV Transportation, which is a bus services that's contracted through Valley Mountain Regional Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about where your other locations, I think you mentioned the Modesto location, yes. the address, and how about the Manteca? Uh, the Manteca office is located at 117, 117, it's, it's 117 119 Sycamore Avenue. Yeah, yeah it's right by it's the library address. park. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And in Tracy, you said you don't have an actual facility. So where are you doing training at for the clients? So they will do training uh, just anywhere within the city limits of Tracy. Um, so they're learning how to ride the buses out there, um, basically doing a lot of volunteer work and then employment opportunities that are out there. Great. But they but they will occasionally utilize the Manteca office if yes. they want to do in house trainings. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. And it sounds like you have an amazing program. Let's talk about the thing that's difficult for any nonprofit, any organization that's doing work um, in the city, county. Let's talk about funding. How are you funded? We are funded through Valley Mountain Regional Center, uh, which is funded directly through the state. Okay. So. Um, that's pretty much our you know our only source of funding but we also do fundraisers for um, our separate program which is employment training program uh, and that's part of the ETA employment area and we'll do crab feeds we'll do um, any type of I know we've done Texas Roadhouse fundraisers anything that we can do that's uh, pretty easy to set up because we are limited with the resources um, to get things like that going but um, we also take donations, again, like I said, from uh, individuals so we can send those to the thrift store so they can sell those off. So it's just whoever is willing to donate or even give us opportunities out there for consumers to, to try to establish employment. And again, we're there to support them. So um, anything we can get our hands on, we will definitely take advantage of. All right. And you talk about the crab feed and other events. Do you have any set events that are coming up? So our crab feed usually happens in February, March. Um, it's a pretty, pretty uh, big event for us. Okay. Um, takes a lot of planning, um, but we usually have a pretty successful crab feed, uh, 200, almost 300 plus. Where Wonderful. I think now we've done it five years now. Yeah, last night. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're, we're looking to kind of expand into a, a new site where we can house a few more people. Because I was going to ask you where need. you're having 500, yeah. because that's really good. We're at our actual facility yes. oh yeah it's wonderful. pretty big um but like and then he you said, don't have a rental we yes. don't wonderful. exactly exactly um and we're looking to actually have another one hopefully in october yeah so um that's something to look forward to because we are getting so big and we have so many people that attend you know separate separating it and having additional ones would make it a little bit easier great awesome and are you utilizing um any of the like amazon smile or the smart cards no. no. Okay, no. so we should talk about both of those because those are both options as ways for you to request items and also generate some extra income. Um, and let's talk about Rita's. Yes, okay, <laughs> so John is one, John and myself and three, our two other owners um, have gone in and purchased the Rita's of Stockton, Manteca, and we already previously owned the Galt location. But the, the whole reason behind it was we wanted to figure out how we can get consumers, our clients, employment. And mm -hmm. we figured we're having such a hard time with outside employers, why not create our own? Mm -hmm. So um, at it's this- It's a win-win. It's and a win-win. Rita, Rita's is wonderful. The Bob Tannen and his family yes. built that up hugely in our community and did so much and I'm it's it makes total sense for you guys to have it yes Bob has been a great support yeah, for he's us been a huge resource for us yes and, and he's staying us. on to to continue to support us which is awesome and we're trying to get our clients to learn you know some of the tasks that that we would have to do if we worked at Rita is and then employ them there so it's a it's a long-term goal for you know for some of them um, but hey it's a place for them to learn 
And it can yeah. be a source of funding as well. Definitely. Um, I know that the Tannen family was using that as a way to donate and give back to the community. Um, just another shout out to them. They actually just won Business of the Year. Congratulations, um, Bob and yes. Casey. Cool. Yes. All right. So when you're training, um, imp you're, you're training people to do different jobs, can you talk about what you're training them in besides the actual uh, mannerisms of doing that job they also have to work with clients things like that how do you help them to overcome if they have a fear of that how do you teach them how to do that so we, we basically have a 12-week training course that we had uh, we put in place um, and it was actually put in place by myself when we when I first started um, getting our consumers trained in the employment area um, we will do any type of training so like Stacy said earlier our services are more individualized basically if I have a consumer that comes in and wants to be um, I mean a coffee barista was not something that was high on our list at one point um, a lot of our consumers would do like janitorial work and things like that mm -hmm. um, restaurant work things um, so when we got our kiosk basically we put these 12 week courses for all of our job trainings um, and it can go anywhere from customer service it can be um, the kiosk training um, what else have we been doing the uh, janitorial the kiosk the landscaping, the landscaping. Um, we put them through 12-week courses and that 12-week course basically what we do is is we will give them the ins and outs of that position um, and I'll use uh, janitorial as, as an example um, they would be able to go in and they go into the janitorial room make sure that they're able to mix chemicals um, like for the Safety. floors uh, learning the the safety aspects of everything wearing the goggles um, but it's a 12-week course um, and basically what happens during that 12 weeks is, is making sure that they're able to maintain the job that we are trying to get them into um, and a lot of that time too is, is you, you kind of see how serious the consumers are during that point um, attendance wise and then as as far as how far they want to move going towards it um, we've had a lot of people successfully pass it um, and we have very successful janitors in the places that we have placed them at this point. Yeah. Shout out to Red Lobster. Yes. They have been yes. with us and had a group there from when we first opened. And we they work Monday through Thursday for two hours a day. And they clean that all the whole restaurant area prior to it opening. And they do an excellent their, job. Their GM, Mark, has been, awesome. uh, Mark Rutledge, yeah. has been awesome to us during yeah. that time. Great. And have you, I was going to ask if you have reached out to Blaine Bibb at Janitech. At all. No. I have not. No. Okay. You have to give us that. All right. I'll give <laughs> that to you. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Awesome. And let's go back, Stacy. Tell me how you, what motivated you to create this organization? So I had a feeling this was going to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually graduated at UOP with a degree in uh, sports medicine. Okay. Yes, so I finished. Shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, they are great supporters of Rita's, by the way, as well. Um, so I graduated, needed a summertime job. My good friend referred me to uh, a competitor that we still have, that's still open and exists. And I started off at the bottom. I was an instructor. I then moved up to management, um, got an opportunity to expand into opening my own program along with uh, other individuals. And... Um, it's just, I was just so gratified and I, I just loved the field. I didn't know about the field. It just was by chance. And um, it's very rewarding to see the success that our consumers, uh, you know, what they achieve. You know, it sounds amazing. It yeah. sounds incredible. And I was surprised that I was not aware of your organization. Yeah. I haven't heard of it. Hopefully today we'll, we'll get the word out more. Um, how can the community help you? Well, I would say, first of all, you know, if they have uh, any fears as to hiring any individuals with developmental disabilities, fear not. Um, they are great individuals, hard workers, uh, especially if you have people like us who can help support them in the job place. Mm -hmm. I mean, give them a try. Uh, it's worth the try. And, you know, we're there to make sure that the job gets done. So reach out to us saying, hey, you know, you have some additional side work that maybe your other employees don't necessarily have time to do. We, we will be there. So awesome. And how about financial backing? Um, I mean, I would just say if, if they have anything that where we can uh, participate in when I mow thrift, 
uh, any donations, um, anything where they need junk carried away, we will, you know, call us. We have employees who will take care of that, consumer employees. Um, just if you are looking for a coffee kiosk, we'll bring one to you. <laughs> All right, you know? awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And the the junk disposal, is that in all the cities? It is. Wonderful. It is. It Excellent. Is. And mm -hmm. what about the cities that you don't have facilities in? We, it's not far, so we would just actually take a group down to that area. So um, you could do Lodi, could. Stockton? Yes, okay. we have the resources available to do that. Wonderful. Definitely. Because that's huge. That's something that everyone can use. Mm -hmm. um, if an employer is looking for an employee, how can they contact you? I would say um, they can call John or I directly. Again, I'll give I, our number 209-475-1529. Um, and we always return our phone calls immediately because we're always there. We're like the diehard employees that are just never, never miss a day. So you can contact us or you can even email us at uh, srodriguez at odsinc.org. Wonderful. And John, let's come back to you. What motivated you to be a part of this organization and to do this? So I actually, I actually started as a teacher's assistant at Walton Developmental Center. Okay. Um, my aunt actually worked there for many years, Ramona Estrada. Um, really didn't, didn't think that I would be in the field for as long as I have been. Um, it really interested me, and like Stacy said, it is very rewarding. Um, I started at Open Door Services in 2005. Um, been there since. I started as an instructor, moved up to management, um, and then became the director um, about probably about five years ago, I believe. Um, I, I just I really liked the I really liked the direction of our company. Um, Stacy's been an awesome owner for us. Um, when we first bought our building on Coronado, um, I had never had uh, a director or an uh, owner come up to me and say, "Okay, John, this is our building. How do you guys want to?" How's it going to work best for our consumers? Um, so and you that's got what, to design it. Kinda, in a sense, we did as a team. Um, but that's what I love about Stacy. She's, you know, money's no object when it comes to her consumers and our consumers. Um, I've seen this lady take our guys to Special Olympics tournaments and them come in with like holes in their shoes, and she's taken the whole team to go buy shoes right before a tournament. Aww. So you know, at, at that point, I knew that I was with with a good company, um, and I, I like the direction of how she created like a family oriented business. Um, all of our guys are able to come and talk to us on a daily basis. Um, my doors never shut, her doors never shut. I believe Stacy deals with some of our hardest behavioral consumers in the morning because they just want to come in and see Stacy in the morning. Mm -hmm. So daily routine. <laughs> so, and she takes the time while, you know, out of her busy schedule, cause obviously her schedule is very, very busy. Um, she will come in and, and, and we'll sit with them and have that morning with them to kind of ease their day up, which is really nice. Um, it's just the family orientedness of, of open door services. Um, there's not a consumer that doesn't know me or Stacy or any of our other management team members. Um, and there's, we always have enough time to, to deal with whatever, what they're dealing with on a daily basis. Awesome. So that's and what I really loved about it. What are the limits? What's stopping you from having a facility in Tracy? If is it funding? funding? Is it location? Funding. I would definitely say funding. Um, there have been opportunities where VMRC will uh, occasionally give out grants to startup programs. Um, at the time, we weren't prepared to apply for that, so we didn't, which we should have. Uh, but yeah, it's the startup funds. You know, it, those grants come very rare, rarely. Like it just doesn't happen. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, hoping that it'll come up soon because you know they do need programs out there. I think they have one program out there. Okay. Um, that All has right. a facility. And what about at your other your current locations that that are walled? Are you at the maximum capacity for those facilities? Or no, no. no. Okay, no. good. Okay. Yeah, our Manteca office is uh, definitely new. It's only been around for I think two years, a year and a half, two years. Okay. Um, so they're just growing, and they're growing quickly. Uh, Modesto's pretty much remained the same over the years. Like I said, it originated um, ODS. It was our original location, and we have a lot of the original clients. Uh, but oh, wow. you know, there's a lot of programs out there too. So, and what's how long do people stay clients with you? Um, I've had consumers with me since before I was there <laughs> at I some points, and a lot of them just don't want to leave because, like I said, the family environments in some aspects. We are like the second family in some That's aspects. Awesome. We are yeah. the only family. I have um, consumers who have followed me from the old program <laughs> to 
my program. So, uh, and I have, there's over a handful of those individuals. They just, it, like you said, it's just a family oriented. Yeah. That's wonderful yeah. that it's like a second family it is. or their only family. Mm -hmm. um, any final things as we're wrapping up that you'd like to add? <sighs> um, that if anyone, I guess if anyone's interested in even coming to tour mm -hmm. or just coming to see us, um, even, and, and I, t I tell everyone in my tours when I do tours with families or consumers, um, regardless if you attend open door services or if you attend any other day program, attend a program. Uh, it, it helps so much with just like socialization and then even getting a job. Quality the, of life. The quality of life yeah. for a consumer who even works a couple hours a day um, and gets in gets into it is is just is such so much better off. Um, so whether it's our company or any other company, um, definitely attend a program or come and take a look at ours for sure. And we never discriminate. Yes. We take everybody. So as long as we have the space available, we will um, work with the individual and their needs and hopefully better them, you know, for the future. And I think a lot awesome. of the people that have heard of Open Door Services, they recognize us as like a higher functioning day program where mm -hmm. our consumers function at a very, very high level. Um, and that's quite the opposite. We, we deal with a lot of behavioral consumers as well on all different levels. Um, so I don't want to let that discourage anyone and thinking, okay, Open Door Services, they're a really high functioning day program. Um, we do deal with a lot of the high functioning um, but we, we tailor our services to, to every individual and every consumer that may walk through the door. Wonderful. And Come let's just repeat all your information, your phone, your website. Okay. Um, so to contact either John Nakawadasi or Stacy Rodriguez, you can call us at 209-475-1529. Uh, you can also email me at srodriguez at odsinc.org. And John... His is a little bit longer. He can say his email address. So my email address is uh, J Nakawatase. It's N A K A W A T A S E at O D S I N C dot O R G. And what about the website? Uh, our website is www dot O D S I N C dot O R G. And then you can Google it or Facebook us, and you know it. You'll see everything we have yes. to offer right on that Facebook page. Awesome. And does either one of you have a special memory that you would like to share? Um, just an experience in, in working with this organization that has just been heartwarming for you. I would say for me, there was an individual um, that I, I personally would pick up every morning when we first opened um, just to make it accommodating for the family. Um, but I grew to love her like my own. She used to ride with my daughter when she was probably uh, five years old, and we had her all the way through just recently to where she ended up moving out of uh, this area. And I'm so sad she wow. left us. <laughs> I miss her dearly, and I wish she but would come she back. But she progressed. She moved oh, on. Oh yeah, she she's wonderful. We <laughs> learned everything in and out about her. We knew how to deal with her behaviors. She had Down syndrome. Um, and shout out Tina, we miss you. Yeah. Wonderful, awesome. I think maybe one of my warmest memories is is I was able to um, provide Christmas for a group of consumers, um, and I really had felt really really bad that they didn't have the same opportunities. And this is when I was very young as a as an instructor, um, but I had a group of consumers, and I would sit and we would chat daily, um, and I had sat and asked them one one day, well, so what are you guys doing for Christmas? And all three of them in my group basically said that they had nothing to do. Um, I said, well, you're not having dinner or anything. Um, so I I got that news. It upset me. But then I remember contacting Stacy and saying, hey, I know it's kind of not what we do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to take them home for Christmas dinner. Um, my family was more than welcome to invite them over. Oh, um, so I, awesome. I was able to, to to get them over for Christmas and have just a dinner. And we That's got them a couple of gifts. Huge. And things it's like huge because awesome. they don't have a lot of support yeah. systems. And then it, it created a lot of other things like, we, you know, for Thanksgiving, we provide for our entire program, all three programs, we provide um, we provide a Thanksgiving dinner, a traditional Thanksgiving dinner for Wonderful. our consumers. Because um, a lot of them, like I said, they're, they're not having some of those things for Thanksgiving. So we, we provide those things. Christmas, we try to we try to make each holiday special in, in, in an ODS special type of way. So, mm -hmm. And it sounds like um, your facilities are huge if you have the capacity for yes. that many people. That's yes. awesome. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's amazing. Well, I'm so thrilled that both of you were here today, and it sounds like this organization is amazing and doing phenomenal things throughout our county and beyond, actually. 
Um, and so I'm hoping that our listeners will support you um, and definitely let us know the dates for your upcoming events. I know you mentioned there's something in October. So when we hear that, come back and do a PSA and hopefully we'll get you some other connections in the community mm -hmm. to really help you continue doing the amazing work that you are. We really appreciate you inviting us. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here. And in just a couple of minutes, we'll take a picture. <laughs> Fine, fine. <laughs> All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I am the Voice of Stockton. You are the Voice of Stockton. We are the Voice of Stockton. Let's make it a great day.